Chapter 11, A Battle of Life and Death They found Jim exactly where Lepus had said they would. He was lying curled up next to a rock at the bottom of a gully. Aubrey shouted desperately, Dad! Suzanne's, Suzanne's torch lit up Jim's huddled shape. And she hugged him tight. We did it, she said. We found him in time. You found him in time, you extraordinary boy. You've saved him, you know. He could have been anywhere. I would never, ever have found him without you. How on earth did you know he was here? Aubrey did not answer his mother at first. Tides of feelings surged through him. He had never felt so relieved. Part of him felt dizzy with thankfulness and he was shocked at everything that had happened from the dreadful moment in his room when he realised that the ute was attacking to the wild race through the wood on his mother's back to the terror of seeing Jim lying in the dip. You've had your shot, ute, Aubrey thought. Now it's my turn. The time has come. We'll have it out tonight. I'll meet you wherever you want, but I will meet you and then we'll see what you're made of. He took a deep breath. He's going to be okay, is he, Mum? Jim spoke up from behind them. I'm going to be just fine, Aubrey boy. I don't know what came over me, he said slowly, but I do know I'll never do anything like that again. I'm so sorry I frightened you. I'll never be able to apologise enough or thank you enough. I haven't got the words. I know I haven't been well, but I know I am the luckiest man in the world tonight. Aubrey and Suzanne looked at him. They were, they were full of so many feelings, they didn't know what to say. Group hug, shouted Suzanne, and they rushed together and clung tight, the three of them, there in the dark dip in the moor. Now, said Jim, does anyone have any idea how we get back to Woodside Terrace? Suzanne laughed. Aubrey does, she said. He seems to know all sorts of extraordinary things. Aubrey took their hands, one on each side, and led them all the way home.